inverse of quadratic function. Sometimes it is very difficult to find inverse of a quadratic function given in standard form. So we have a similar case here. I have taken purposely a very simple one. So here we have example which says determine inverse of f of x equals to x square minus 4x plus 1. Now how are you going to do it? Now if you swap x and y then it's very difficult to isolate y, right? So in such questions, first and foremost thing is to do completing the squares and get this quadratic function in a form which could be algebraically manipulated easily, right? So we will do that part. So we have y equals to x square minus 4x plus 1. So we'll do completing the squares. We get x square minus 4x. To complete the squares, we have to take a number which is half of 4 and square it. So half of 4 is 2, so we'll square it and subtract the same number so that the equation is maintained, right? So we get x square minus 4x plus 2 square minus 2 square. Now in this particular thing, first three terms form a perfect square. So we can write this as x minus sign from here and plus 2 from there, x minus 2 whole square, and we're left with these terms, which is minus 2 square which is minus 4 plus 1 and that gives us x minus 2 whole square minus 3 right so that is y now we should start the process of finding inverse function right so let's swap and solve so what we will do now is we'll interchange x and y and so we get x equals to within bracket y minus 2 whole square minus 3. Now we'll bring 3 this side, so we get x plus 3 equals to y minus 2 whole square, and now we'll square root it, and whenever you square root, you have to do plus and minus. You get x plus 3 equals to y minus 2, and now y is equals to 2 plus minus square root of x plus 3. So that becomes the inverse function. And this can be written as f inverse of x is equal to 2 plus minus square root of x plus 3. And that's how you can get your answer, right? So that is kind of very important that you need to first complete the square, get it in the vertex form, and only then you can actually solve the problem. Now at times you'll be asked to do domain and range for this function, right? So let's do domain and range. So let's write domain and range for the function. As you know, domain for poly, uh, this, uh, as you know, the domain for parabola is all real numbers, right? There is no restriction here. So it is x belongs to real numbers. But the range is restricted. Range is y belongs to real numbers where y the parabola opens upwards from minus 3 so y greater than or equal to minus 3 so that is the domain and range for f of x right now we will write down for f inverse x for f inverse x it will flip so we should write domain as x belongs to real numbers and x should be greater than or equal to minus 3 do we get that we can check from here x plus 3 should be greater than or equal to 0 that means x is greater than or equal to minus 3 that is perfect so it's a check do you see that it is a very very important check so we get domain x belongs to real numbers where x is greater than or equal to minus 3 do you see that and range r y is y belongs to real numbers right since we have plus and minus here so y belongs to real numbers, right? Both sides. So domain and range also matches with our own function, correct? Now this is very important. At times, you may find questions where we may give restriction here itself that determine inverse of this function where x is greater than, let's say, 2. Now if we write x greater than 2, then when you do this inverse, you have to use plus sign. And if I write change this question, let me change it for the time being. 
if I change this question and I write where x is less than I am writing this number 2 is less than 2 then how will it change it will change this inverse function that we will take only the minus value not the plus one since we are interested in the negative half of our parabola let me show you here let's say the parabola is like this right when we say this is less than 2 then we are interested in this part of the parabola now if our let's say inverse is kind of like this let us say so this half is reflected by the lower half correct that means our inverse for this restricted function will be equal to 2 minus of x plus 3 remember that if I add this restriction right in that case that is going to be the inverse of the function right that means we are looking for the negative half of the square root function so these are very important things to understand when you do inverse function I hope you appreciate it thank you